Hello and welcome to uh, another edition of the Blood Brothers podcast. Uh, Sean Coleman is sadly not with us tonight. He is holidaying, we believe, um, but we do have Mr. Rob Parker. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, I love the, the suggestion that we don't actually know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> we just use his Zoom. <laughs> yeah, slight hint of his unavailability. <laughs> and if something happens to him, then this feels a bit disconcerting. Yeah, we've got uh, this like we're one a cover up. <laughs> Um, and as well as Rob, we are joined tonight by our guest, uh, the author of Little White Lies, which is a fantastic cover. I mean, that cover really, before I read a word of it, I knew I was in. Um, and more recently, Safe and Sound, also a fantastic cover. Uh, the author, Philippa East. Hello. Hello. Hi. How Hi, are, are you? I'm really well. I am having a very good day today. Yes, I'm happy and uh, cheerful. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. I really enjoy these ones because it feels like we booked this like ages ago and it always seems to roll around and it's so nice when it does. So it was really nice to have you. Yeah, I think we booked it last December and you guys were so busy. You had you, Your show had kind of really taken off and you had so many people booked that um, I think your, your next date was like, yeah, now in August. I've just spent the whole year like, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great to have you with us. Thanks so much, Philippa. Um, I think, um, obviously, I mean, uh, what a great couple of years you've had. Just absolutely incredible what's been going on. Um, and uh, awards baiting stuff that you've been putting out as well. Um, I mean, um, Chris, I don't want to step on any toes um, in terms of the questions you might have, because we always have this question like, who's going to drive it tonight? Who's going to host it? And I've, I've just jumped in and, and like, I've got a question straight off the bat. You go Is that for okay? it. Yeah. So, so how did it start for you? Like, because obviously, like the, the first book, Little White Lies, was so well received. How did that come about? Um, well, you know, as the classic story, like it looks like it's just like, oh, this first novel and it was just da 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 da. Obviously, it's never like that. It's always, it's always like a tip of the iceberg thing, isn't it? So I started writing, hmm, like about eight years or something before that. And I started writing totally for fun, completely for fun, just as another activity that I was dabbling with and started I just sort of thought hey I'll write a novel yeah that'll be great <laughs> um, and actually it really was fun you know I just spent about a year and a half you know I'd come home from work and I'd get my laptop out at the kitchen table and I'd just like write the next thing that the characters were doing um, and I just had a re really loads of fun with it and I sort of found my way into some writing communities as part of that um, and realized that my novel was well it was not for <laughs> not for <laughs> public eyes put it that way it was just you know it was amateur it was amateur and um uh but i started i just knew i loved writing at that point and i started writing short stories um just because it was a really kind of neat and flexible way to learn about writing and i really enjoyed doing that that alongside that like i say i was kind of finding my way into the writing community learning about the craft all of that kind of thing so I probably did that for yeah like six or seven years um and started sending them out and getting some of them published and accepted and it kind of that really spurred me on that really made me think like oh you know maybe I'm not totally awful at this maybe it's something that I can kind of do you know um and then and then I left my full-time job in the NHS in 2015 and went part-time and I thought I've had this idea for a novel for a while. Mm. And I was, I was, it was really stupid. You know, when you have like one of those, you put one of those questions on like a writing forum or, or Twitter or something. And then you're like, hmm, I know the answer to that. I was like, what shall I do with this extra time I have? I was like, oh, I should write that novel, right? You know? Um, <laughs> uh, and then, yeah. And then I, I, I mean, it went through so many drafts, so many drafts, so many drafts. So it took a really long time to get it in the shape that it is now, um, which I can go into more if you want the gory details <laughs> in due course. But yeah, like it's kind of, um, I've been writing a long time before I wrote this, put it that way. That, that's you know? absolutely brilliant because that reinforces both um, how impressive it is what you achieved with that first book, but also that, that there's no such thing really in this industry that we keep finding now as an overnight success. You know, someone who just 
like straight away just goes like sits down and goes like oh I just fancy writing a book and then they smash it on the first like try or whatever you know so it's those amazing. people should be shot right I mean <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is like more, more often than not I find that those people really don't exist I, yeah I, do those people I, I don't know you know it's amazing it's a real story and because our listeners really love the story you know as do we of how people got got going and got into publication because it, it drives them on too because we know we have a lot of um potential authors who listen to us so that's yeah. brilliant and yeah. i i used to do the same i used to do so much research as to how people you know how do people get there and those yeah exactly those stories are always really inspiring and if you find yourself doing something that another author did that was the step for them. Like, I think I, I got long listed in a novel competition at one point and I was reading something about how somebody else had got long listed and then that, and I was like, oh, you know, maybe I'm on the right track, you know, and, and all of that kind of thing. It's really, yeah. I always think of it like a ladder and like there's people mm. above you on the ladder that you can kind of like look up and follow. And then there's people kind of coming up behind you on the ladder that you can kind of pass it down to as well, you know, like help them or give them a tip or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice way to look at it. Yeah, it's so brilliant that because that that example of, well, uh, it's sort of like an example of the way this industry seems to work, especially in crime and mystery and stuff like that. It's just everyone's so happy to pass it on and pay it forward and give each other a leg up and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Can you tell us a bit about your second book? Sure. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a standalone. Both of them are standalone books, and it's another. I mean, it gets sort of categorised as a psychological thriller. I think of it as a sort of psychological mystery. Um, and the premise is basically about um, a young, charismatic, pretty woman um, known to be very kind of, you know, she, she works and she's known to be pretty sociable and popular. And um, she falls behind on her rent and the housing manager for the flat that she lives in, who's a woman called Jen, um, eventually has to go and knock on the door uh, with the bailiffs, basically, um, which is kind of like one of the crappy parts of her job. And when they finally gain entry into the flat, they've been expecting her to be there because they can hear the radio playing through the door and stuff. And they just assume that she's just not answering the door. Um, when they find their way into the flat, they discover that she's um, she's dead. She's died in there. And the most kind of haunting and kind of bizarre thing about it is she's clearly been dead in there for a really long time. And it transpires that she's been, um, you know, she's just been there for about 10 months and nobody realised, nobody noticed, nobody raised the alarm. And the story is, is basically housing manager... Jen's attempts to really try and unravel what on earth has happened, like how this could happen to somebody, um, someone like that, basically. Um, yeah, so that's that's the that's the story. That's amazing. And where did the idea come from for that? Um, so it's it's based on a true story, basically, or inspired by a true story, however you want to say it. Um, I watched uh, a documentary, it was like a docudrama, um, probably in about 2013, and I would recommend it to anybody to watch it. It's a beautiful piece of um, filmography, or if that's the word, I don't know. Um, and it's about um, a woman whose name was Joyce Vincent, who, um, yeah, died in, in her bedsit in London in, I think it was 2003, end of 2003, and then they didn't discover her body until uh, early 2006. And it was, um, yeah, and you, and the filmmaker, Carol Morley, um, basically tracked down a number of people who had known Joyce and interviewed them and I tried to piece together, you know, who she was and how this had happened. And again, she, you know, it, one of the totally striking things in the docudrama was that Carol Morley, the filmmaker, had tracked down some of her old colleagues and, and stuff like that. And they'd heard about this story. They'd heard in the newspapers about this you know, women found in her flat after 10 years. And they just had not thought that that Joyce was their Joyce. They just thought, I don't understand how the person that we knew, the Joyce that we knew, um, could have ended up like that. Um, so I watched that back in about 2013 and I just couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my head really. And then um, I thought, well, I'm a writer, I'll write about it. So <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Man, what a story. 
Yeah, that is amazing. Um, I've just been... I, I, one of the great things about this podcast is I always learn so much doing it. So I've been frantically taking notes on the right hand side of my screen here to try and catch up with this because what a story that is. That's mm. yeah. absolutely mad. And another one of those examples of where like life sometimes really is stranger than fiction. I know. I know. Well, that was one of the weird things about, uh, yeah, when I was writing this book and some people started to ask me, you know, what it was going to be about. And I would tell them, they were just like, yeah, but that wouldn't, ha- like, how would that even happen? Like, you couldn't, <laughs> yeah, shut up. And I was like, no, it, it does, it did. Um, the the the, um, the film's called Dreams of a Life, actually. I should have said that. Um, yeah, Dreams of a Life. It was on, it, they repeated it on um, film four again recently. So um, you should be able to track it down. Um, mm. Yeah, it's well wow. worth a watch. I'm going to try and watch it. Yeah, it sounds really good. Um, you mentioned about um, your job so and you, that you went part-time. How, what does your writing day look like then? Or, or your week, I guess? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, um, I, um, so I'm a clinical psychologist, so I have my own practice now, which is nice because it means I'm my own boss and I can set my own hours. And um, yeah, so I do that. I, I run my clinics on usually just one day a week, actually. Um, and then I on another one other day a week I do kind of um sort of administration and things and answer answer messages and stuff for the practice um but that leaves the rest of the time for writing which is which is really nice (laughs) um so I that's that's been something I'm really grateful for and really feel really lucky about because I know lots of people I mean like you know you guys are juggling well jobs and children and all of this kind of thing and I'm like I'll just have another nap. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. no, because so I mean, I, oh gosh, so many questions. What's the la- like? Don't want to date the podcast too much by asking this question, but what has the last eighteen months been like there for you know, with obviously the wider world issues? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I've obviously had to shift to working from home. So I actually do a lot of my client work like this now um, through through um, Zoom and things, um, which actually actually worked out really well, mostly. Um, and I think it's it's a bit like we've talked about all other kinds of things, like, you know, like um, writing festivals and stuff. I think that going forwards, people will keep this up in sh- some shape or form and have that kind of hybrid model. So I did just last week start um, going back to face-to-face work with my clients again but a lot of them have actually said you know I, I just want to continue online it means I don't have to do the commute it means I can you know um, I can see clients I've got some clients who are from all over the country you know who who obviously wouldn't be able to see me otherwise so um, yeah so that's been the main change I think and um, I've been busier than normal so I think as an I don't think it was come as a surprise to anyone that if you think about it, kind of everyone's kind of on a on a place on the sort of thermometer of their mental health. And there's a kind of threshold as when that tips over. And it's kind of like the whole population have kind of been moved up. So there's just that many more people who are kind of crossing that threshold into really struggling. Um, and yeah, people who um, maybe were already struggling are, are just doing that bit more difficult, having that bit more difficulty. And so I think, yeah, this, it's been a bit busier than than before yeah thank you what an amazing thing to do though like because like yeah. you say mental health I, I think of even like the past year has become so much more prevalent mm. being spoken about it, especially with the all the olympic and sport i mean that's some yeah. simone biles doing a massive thing for it but um yeah. yeah to do that as a job must be so rewarding yeah, I, but I always think, at least I'm not a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I always look at your jobs and I'm like, oh my God, how do you do it? You're basically just like a <laughs> social worker. Yeah, and like, yeah. uh, I, I think, wow, like that's that's tough. Um, so we respect yeah. each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is sick of me telling him how much I admire what he does. I think. He I, know, I know, I know, I know. Thank you. I find um, this. Because I've had to isolate on my on my last day, um, we got a positive test. So it, like before the kids oh. came in, we had to send them all home. So I literally have been like didn't even get to say goodbye to them. Um, oh no! Which is a bit of a shame. But I've realised that I mean I've got two children at home, um, but I've been sort of sneaking off to do bits and pieces of writing here and there, and it's made me long to just be full time writer because I'm like the words are just coming and then it's like. 
yeah have to just like go back to work or whatever but it's been such it's been nice in a way because yeah it's coming pretty thick and fast which is good yeah i like that feeling yeah mm. and rob yeah. you you've that feeling's been happening for you hasn't it um yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, confession time. Um, I, I, um, I've had a good day today. Um, I, I went to the pub with my uh, my young lad at four o'clock this afternoon, um, and we we've not long since come home. So um, um, I'm having a really good day. <laughs> no, but we we um, I no I finished. Um, I started a, a new one on the thirtieth of April, and I finished it this afternoon. Um, what? It's yeah, fast. no, it's it's the it's the second first draft of this year as well. So, um, I did one between Boxing Day and, uh, yeah, twenty ninth of April. Um, so um, I'm like, no, 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 but I'm like, I'm I'm just because I, I I write through fear a lot to be honest. <laughs> like, because I went full time way too soon, way oh, really? too soon. Yeah. I'd and 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 now it's like oh my god i've just got to make sure that there is relentless output to yeah keep making sure that i can do this job um oh which god. means that like obviously so today was a good no i feel i feel like it because uh, i came back from harrogate last week on the monday um and i was on sixty five thousand words and 85 was the uh, 85 was the target and i hit 86 this afternoon so oh, eight wow. days um 21,000 words so wow. that's, and it just wow. but that's what you were saying about it just when it falls out of you yeah if you yes. can just catch it just catch just yes. make sure you catch it somehow <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah I'm like so I'm in a yeah I'm happy I mean it's not perfect um nothing ever is but um I can't wait to go and play with this and make it oh, that's fantastic yeah, that's oh. yeah. and yeah. Philip are you sent something off today didn't you yes yes, yes. No, that's that's particularly why it was a good day today yeah so yeah, I um, I got I, I basically submitted my manuscript for book three to my editor, um, which I am super pleased about because book three has basically been a total nightmare, and I thought that book two was a total nightmare, and I thought that book one was a total nightmare. So it's, <laughs> it's like it just keeps getting worse. There's a trend emerging. There's a trend emerging. So yeah. That's amazing! Congratulations. Yeah, yeah that's, that's thank you. Can yeah. you tell us anything about it? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, I, I mean, I'm, <laughs> the only reason I'm hesitating is because um, basically, I, I wrote a whole other book three that was didn't work at all, and I've shelved. So, six months ago, when people were asking me, like, "Oh, can you tell us a bit about book three? I was like, "Well, it's about da 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 da," and now I'm like. Well, that's not even true anymore. <laughs> so I'm like, if I, if, I'm like worried that if I tell you about this book three in like four weeks time, my editor will send me like an email like, mm, I think we have to shelve this one too. <laughs> no, like, oh my no god! <laughs> so how much did you have to shelve of books of the like the first iteration of book three? Um, well, I wrote an in, I wrote the entire thing and sent it to my agent, and she was like, it needs a total rewrite, and I was like, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. So I did a total rewrite and then sent it to my editor, you know, delivered it to my editor. And long and the short of it is she was, we decided to shelve it. Oh. <laughs> so I basically wrote book three twice, oh shelved it, and now I've written an entire new book three. And what, <laughs> so what, are the, what are the similarities? I mean, are there, is, it entire, is it just like a new book? Yeah, it's a, complete, it's a completely different book. It was, it was basically the idea that I was going to write for book four. So I've just parked basically book three and like... Oh my God. God, <laughs> 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 I hear of these things <laughs> happening every now and then. Yeah. Someone just goes, "All right, I'm not going to do it." And then, but you've literally written a book and you've just put it away and then written another one. Yeah, basically. And I'm like, I think I'm still slightly traumatized because I'm like, yeah. what happened? <laughs> like, what happened there? Um, I'm like, I'm ju only just starting to talk about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is part of the intervention. This is part of the recovery yeah, process. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like group notes sort of like, yeah, I'm, I'm Philip Arista and I'm shelved a bit. But I, I, I still don't know entirely what happened. Like I can, I can kind of figure out like, the, yeah, the book wasn't kind of working. It just wasn't, 
I kind of I sort of ended up writing a sort of literary family drama accidentally that that then I tried to turn into a thriller but it was like it was like trying to shove like a squirrel in an overcoat or something (laughs) 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 Um, uh, if we had episode names that would be yeah 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 maybe first time we do it, it be, you might have inspired us <laughs> oh, and and yeah so I kind of like went back and forward with my editor for a bit like I was trying to think about ways that we could fix it and like c- coming up with a whole lot of pl- new plot ideas and I was going back and forward with my agent and eventually my agent said you've been actually mentioning book four quite a lot do you feel like maybe we should just and I kind of been thinking this anyway she kind of said maybe we should just move on to book four and I was like yeah I think that would be really good actually um and actually what's funny is although the story is basically a completely different story, but a lot of the elements kind of ended up the same. So in the first book, it was kind of about a fam- a family that has a child who's um, a real, well, in the, in the original, it was like a, they were a swimming star. And in this new one, it's about um, a family with a teenager who's a violinist, a violin prodigy. And it's a lot to do with kind of, you know, kind of the relationship between that child and the parents and the kind of something disturbing or something going wrong in the family. And the sort of it's sort of a it's sort of an exploration of the marriage as well, which was kind of there in the other book three. So I think in a way there's kind of, I don't know, maybe that book was I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just one of those kind of books that kind of had to come out but doesn't really fit you know what I mean I don't know yeah, yeah. I, I love that I like because I mean I, I'd be the first to put my hand up and say I, there's so much unpublished and unpublishable work <laughs> it's, like, it's the apple bit at the end yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, like so but I never I always totally believe that there's never a word wasted as well yeah. like so and that like it sounds like it's sort of like informed and helped along the way in a in a certain way you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah well, I hope so. I mean, this is a thing. Like, it's like if my editor comes back and say, "Yeah, we're really nailing it now," I'll be like, "Yes, of course, it was all meant to be." And then <laughs> yes. She comes back and she's I had like, "To write a whole book that didn't work to get to this yeah. point." <laughs> yeah. Oh then, what if she comes back and says, "Like, no, it's like, you know, it's this isn't working either." I'll just be like, "Well, I clearly, I'm just <laughs> like that's my career over there. I clearly no, can't do no, this." No. <laughs> did you know? Did you have a feeling inside where you're like, "Oh, I don't know if this is working." No. This <laughs> <laughs> oh, is amazing. I'm no, this is, do you know what? I think, because I really am trying to analyse what went wrong because I don't want to do it again. But I think it's really weird. Like, I I did have a real struggle with book two, which I, is really standard. And I was reading all over the place, you know, second book syndrome, rah, 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 rah. And I kind of just decided, you know what? I can't write a book that's better than Little White Lies. I'm just going to deliver it and it's probably going to be pants and but at least I'll have delivered my book too and whatever. So I just kind of wrote it and it took a lot of work and I and it took I was really hard to figure out the plot and it was a lot of work and I was but I kind of kind of just took the attitude that well, it's just not going to work very well and so be it. And then you know, I think in the end it, it did come out really well. And my editor, you know, felt that it was stronger than the first one, which I was surprised by. But I was like, you know, brilliant. And then I think I kind of got like a false sense of security. And I was really excited by my all my ideas for book three. And I really enjoyed writing it. And I think I just sort of thought, oh, I know how to do this. It's easy. And I kind of forgot that writing a book is basically impossible right you know it's kind of like impossible until it's actually done um and so I was kind of like yeah I love this I'm just so into all the characters and I think I just lost almost like lost sight of the discipline that you need to like really think about what are you doing what's going to work for your readers you know and I think I just yeah I don't know I don't know yeah maybe I just got complacent somehow i'm not sure but this yeah. transparency the, the, what we always um like I, I i think long term we'll try to appeal for is more transparency in the industry and this honesty mm. is so mm. informative and so great for ourselves and our listeners because like me and chris like we've openly discussed whenever we see each other and and you know like when we have moments in like sort of like our fake green room where it's just when no one's showing up again it's just me and chris or, or, or me and chris and sean where we talk about like how amazing it is we get to talk to 
authors like yourself and just people we really admire and then find out that they have the same struggles that mm. we encounter yeah. and that like that is what you're just describing there is just um it's so honest that like it, it can only inform people and make people feel better about what they're doing too mm. yeah well i i hated reading those stories of like oh you know it was quite hard but in the end it was all brilliant and uh, and you know I just was you know I just needed to like take a day to think about it and then I sorted it all out and I'm like I don't want to read them I want to read like the torture stories of people, like having nervous breakdowns because I'm like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah because I think that's true isn't it it's so demoralizing if you think that other people are finding it easier than you are and actually when you hear that someone you know you read a book and you and you think oh my god I'm blown away by this book and then you read an auto, or, um, interview with the author and they say do you know what I, it almost broke me writing this book yeah. and you're like wow yeah. you know it's okay to find it difficult it doesn't mean you're not doing it right you know yeah. I listened yeah. to something the other day with Mark Billingham where he was saying I mean I think it was his 21st book and he said around book 17 he was like I don't know if I can do it again because he'd, he'd stepped yeah. away from his series I think and he said he found it really difficult to find the voice and, and stuff like that so I mean, hearing like the sort of masters of the genre admit to that is really yeah. refreshing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, your characters, so you mentioned characters and get and, and stuff like that. A lot of the reviews that I read, because I was trolling for a one star for our game later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> bring on the scour of <laughs> <bundle. laughs> um, a lot of the a lot of the reviewers said and and also the blurbs from other authors and stuff talked about how you were able to get into the character's head so well um which must be really nice to hear but also it's, it's absolutely true from what I've read um how do you go about creating your characters um I think oh sorry that's my cat <laughs> <laughs> um, I think um characters always come first for me and um they feel very real to me and I can't I can't make them fit a plot. They they can only behave the way, as far as I know, as a psychologist, human beings behave. And I definitely think that my background in psychology helps because basically, basically what my kind of training and job is, is to understand the kind of logic and the mechanisms of how people think and feel and behave and how those are naturally connected and how you know people people don't act randomly people people are not inconsistent and people there's always a logic to the way that people behave and there's always you know being able to understand kind of the the psychological mechanisms or motivations behind that I think I'm kind of immersed in that all the time in my in my profession so I don't necessarily find it that difficult to um think about you know how a character would work but it's sometimes it obviously takes me time to get to know them usually like I have to yeah kind of sometimes figure out yeah kind of what ex what exactly their goal is or their motivation or how particularly they operate in a certain way but I don't I don't tend to feel like I'm I feel like often feel like I'm kind of having to create plot that like that's more of a conscious deliberate process for me but characters it's generally always feels more more organic um and plots a plot I find a lot a lot harder actually yeah and are you That's a planner down. I'm still figuring that out <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I mean uh I think I think I mean the, the, again like this is this is my history with pantsing and planning so my first, with Little White Lies, I had no clue what I was doing, didn't know anything about story structure. So I just wrote a bunch of scenes and then tried to stick them together. And it was like a total Frankenstein. And that's why I probably took 25 drafts to make it into a book. And I was like, I'm never doing that again. So with book two, I spent ages working out an outline and I wrote, I wrote two 3000 word outlines and they were completely different and completely binned them. And then sort of got a third one that was kind of half working and went back and forth with my agent and we finally got an outline that we were both happy with and then I wrote the book very much following that outline no, a few bits and pieces changed but it was basically that was the story and then like I mentioned before I sent it to my agent and she was like mm, it's great that you followed the outline but it's not really working is it and I was like <laughs> 
no, but <laughs> <say."> <laughs> um, so yeah, and then yeah, that was basically the same thing that happened with book three. I got I got the whole outline for it signed off by my agent and editor. I got my I got my second contract with Harper Collins on the basis of that outline, wrote the book according to that outline, and it didn't work. So so like I don't know. I mean I think oh, that's amazing. I, I think I plan in the sense that I understand the story beats. I understand, you know, the anxiety instinct, something happening at sort of the quarter mark, the midpoint, climax and all of that. So I always have that shape in mind, which really helps. But, yeah, my history of planning is not great, but my history of pantsing is even worse. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, can I, can I, what, are those post-it notes behind you? Oh yeah, well this is this is. I was saying to Chris just before we started, the, these are the post-it notes for the third book that, didn't work well actually it's not even for the third book that didn't work this is like a this is like a um aborted effort to come up with a new plot for it <laughs> and I've kind of like kept them because it's like I've got a weird superstition about it now it's like if those posters stay on the wall they can't like come out and harm me again <laughs> it's like the bad story is like captured on the wall there but I can see it oh, it's like the, the evil has to be like <laughs> Like a, like a, a, a daily memento of what went wrong. <laughs> <Just like laughs> yeah, maybe one day when I finally got over the trauma, I'll be able to like take them down. It'd be like a really moving scene, you know. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the hallmark <laughs> Philippa East biography. <laughs> will eventually film. On Lifetime TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll be like this amazing scene. She eventually took her post-its down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, I can read some of them out well. to you, but I don't think we should go there. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I couldn't read any of my notes out. They wouldn't make any sense at all. No, 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 no. Not, no. Not at all. Because they're all part of the bigger thing, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. In your head. No one else's head. In your head. Yeah. yeah. It makes me think these days, you know, when they talk about, you know, like archivists and stuff going through, like, you know, the notes of Hemingway, you think, oh, my God, like, can you imagine what bollocks is in there? <laughs> <laughs> Deciphering that yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, I, I, I um, have an appalling confession. Oh come on! Yeah, um, oh my beer. No, no, no. I, this is this is no, no, no. This is this is next level awful. Um, yours, um, your first book is one of the only books I've ever burned. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> What happened was, um, when I ordered it the first time, um, the delivery driver left it outside in a place I didn't know he'd left it. And it got waterlogged and got massive. It, it, like, it swelled up to like an insane size. Um, and I ordered a second copy. <laughs> and that's what I read. But then one night I ran out of firewood, so I burnt the fat version of your book. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just put this massive, like, bike pump inflated version of your book on the fire. Did a great job, by the way. <laughs> oh, my, oh my God, wait, let me show you something. This will make you laugh. Wait. <laughs> oh, nice. How thematically perfect. <laughs> oh, that's the American cover. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. How much does that work? It's prophetic. <laughs> Honestly. Do you know what what happened was I I'd been on holiday that's and I so ordered funny. it when I was on holiday. Um, oh. and didn't realise it was coming like next day delivery. And I was like, oh hell on the holiday, why did I do this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm so, just so um, touched that you bought it twice. Could you could have been like, yeah, okay, I didn't really want to read it anyway. <laughs> no, no, I have to <laughs> Well, I would say I have two copies, but I couldn't put the big fat basketball version on my shelf. So. <laughs> what, what did it like? What like what it colour was, did it burn? Was it like it, no? It, no, it burned like a, a no colour. colours. It just it like fanned out into this giant ball. Of, <laughs> it was outstanding. Why did it not take a photograph of this thing? You should have. Well, do you know what? I was really oh ashamed gosh. because I didn't want to be like, "Hey, Philip, I bought your book, but look what happened to it." <laughs> you know, like what kind of weirdo does that? I would just like sent you a copy. <laughs> no, no, no. That's it, because I don't want to be one of the, you know, I don't want to be like, right, I, I bought it, therefore I demand a free one when it went wrong <laughs> on my watch. <laughs> I had a, I had so a moment. Sorry. I had a moment between you saying that and thinking, oh my God, like, what, where is this going? 
Oh, what, and I said I'd burned it. <laughs> it's like, what a yeah, thing to admit. There was a little bit of dramatic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had to I use, thought... use the mindfulness techniques. So I was like, mm, don't you were judge. very calm. Yeah. Just accept. I know. Like, don't make assumptions. Just just like, what how did that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You did. You did. <laughs> I thought it would make for good radio if I, uh, I, I, I sort of, oh, yeah, never mind. Very oh, good. Well, so oh, no need to apologise. I felt like burning it a few times anyway. Maybe it was just, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel, I've, I think that'll, I think that'll be a moment in the Lifetime movie as well. I'm sure we could create some symbolism out of that. You know, maybe it's yes, like, maybe yeah. there's some, like something gets freed at that point. You burn the book and it'll unlock <laughs> some creative genius. In <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the fact that it inflated so wide. I, I, I don't know what they make it with. Did they make the, your books with helium? Did you burn the cover as well? I mean, the cover's got all kinds of chemicals in it. No, I, I, like I, all it was, was like, it was like a great big, like, you, do you remember like, um, in the eighties, like a, a big light, like when we all had a big light in our living room. <laughs> the, the big light, yeah. It was yeah. like the big light, yeah. And it was like a, a great big dome that was like sort of made of paper <laughs> and not much else. It was kind of like that. Like I suppose I should roll this in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I think that's the. But it felt terrible. Like I, here I am putting a mangled copy of Philip Reese's celebrated debut into, the <laughs> into my wood burner. <laughs> Oh, I think that's one of the best stories I've ever heard. I'm going to be like, <laughs> next time I put promo out, I'll be like, the yeah. books have been burnt in the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. A book so, a book so troubled and, you know, and life-changing, it had to be burned by readers. <laughs> oh, God. Right, so, so <clears throat> you've done book three. Well, As of well, a few hours ago. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we won't get thrown in the bin again. But let's say for now, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> or, or on any fires. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rob. I'm Simon. And I'm James. We want to talk about those movies. Those supposedly bad movies. Those movies that bombed. To see if they weren't that bad after all, join us every other Tuesday on the For Your Reconsideration podcast, part of the Pod Dojo Podcast Network. You can catch us on iTunes, Spotify, and all your usual podcast apps. And it won't cost you a solitary bean, mate. <laughs> it's like it's free. <laughs> it's just like it's free. <laughs> um, what is next? Well, um, book four, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of... I, I've kind of had to move everything up. So I did actually have an idea for a fifth book, which is now like become potentially becoming a fourth book. And actually like my editor said that she's going to try and get back to me with her tutorial letter in about a month. So I'm probably going to have a rest, mainly have a rest this month, but start to play around with um, fleshing out the ideas for that, um, which I'm also quite excited about. Um, um, Yeah. I'm not going to say too much about it at this stage because um, yeah, I don't really know enough about it, but yeah, I mean, it'll be in the same sort of genre, same sort of vein. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting, I'm looking forward to getting stuck in for sure. Yeah. Outstanding. Um, We've got a Twitter question. Oh, sorry, Rob. Yes. Yes. You do that. It's sort of linked to this. Um, so Laura, who, who I met last week and was, Delightful. I know Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Hi. Laurie, sorry, my bad. <laughs> she is class. Um, yeah, really enjoyed. Um, she said, "Have you ever thought about writing a series?" And then this led me, and then she included another bit which I didn't realize. And then when I researched a bit more, I found out a husband and wife folk band sleuth duo. Can you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there's two parts to this question. First of all, would you consider writing a series? Um, probably not, actually. Um, I take my hat off to folk like you who do and can. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I've never, I've never thought of writing a, writing a series. I think because I, I focus a lot on the kind of character arc, that's what I kind of do. And so when that's kind of ended, it, the book's kind of ended, the story's kind of ended. Yeah, yeah. for me. And then can you tell us about The Miracle Cure? Is that your name? Yeah. yeah. So, so in my, in my other, in my other life, um, but basically, my husband is a musician and also a psychiatrist in his day job. Um, and we have um, a little folk 
duo. Well, it's not little. Well, it's little because there's two of us, but um, <laughs> we, yeah, we basically perform in and around Lincolnshire where we live. Um, we're called the Miracle Cure. And um, yeah, that's basically that's basically what we do in our spare time as that's well. That's class. Yeah. It's so good. I, that, that's, cause that was my question. That was what I was gearing up oh. to ask. Can I ask about the Miracle Cure? So yeah, yeah that's it. stuff. <laughs> oh, did you perform the other were you performing the other day at uh, mm. festival yeah 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 so we um every year they have the lincolnshire um folk festival which is oh it's such a good event it's so lovely just you know not thinking any of them will be listening to this but if they are then hello all you folky people um <laughs> and uh yeah so we we were uh basically any everyone who is kind of musical in the folk scene in Lincolnshire comes along and, and plays it's an all-day event and it's just really nice so we were yeah we were performing it at that the other day and um uh yeah it was just really lovely um yeah it's 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 nice like my, my music is really my husband's thing I'm kind of musical um but I just really it's just something that we just really love doing together and we've been doing it for probably five or six years now together so, yeah so cool it's awesome really 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 cool and <laughs> um, if where can our listeners hear the miracle cure god you know what we have totally failed on that side we actually don't have <laughs> any tracks out in the world so that actually currently the only way to listen to us is like coming to one of our gigs right but... that's no that's it that makes it sound even, <laughs> even more rad yeah. i know we're like so, so yeah so exclusive you have to go live <laughs> well when's your next but... live event um oh that's a good question actually I mean they've been they've been a little bit few and far between obviously with Covid but I think we've got one possibly lined up for um November I think um so they're kind of yeah we have I mean we have a Facebook page if you google the Miracle Cure Facebook you'll find us and we put our gigs and stuff on there and we are working on a CD like we are doing it my my husband's basically been working on um really learning recording and production techniques so he's you know he's kind of developing his own studios so uh, we did record a CD, but it was kind of like just, you know, two, you know, guitars and basic mics. So he's kind of redoing the whole thing. So at some point, hopefully we'll have a CD as well. And then we can do so like exciting. two for one offers, music and a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I, that is so exciting. Yeah. And, uh, I love it. and that, that like um, the through line of creativity and expression is so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think we're both lucky in that we, yeah, we, it's so funny. We met through work, we met through the mental health field, but we both have always had these kind of creative passions that are really our main thing. So, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to let my cat out because. No, go for it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> nice room is there yeah, it is. yeah this doesn't this this doesn't have to go on the podcast at all Philippa but where in your house are you oh this is my writing room so ah. yeah I actually like we we bought this house um two two years ago now I think um three years ago maybe and um it was one of the last rooms they showed us um and it's this little little he used to use it the old one used to use it as an office and it's this little sort of yeah office space that's kind of little tucked away in the little corner of the house up its own little flight of stairs and it was like, wow oh, this is perfect oh wow so, yeah oh, oh no i don't know whether we, we'll discuss whether we put this in but it's like that's so so nice where yeah, you are there. yeah, it's lovely. I mean, I don't always write in here. Sometimes I still write in bed, you know. And like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I, I, yeah, it's it's because it's just like everything that's in here is just my stuff, you know. I can have it exactly how I want, and I've never been too precious about writing space. Like I think that can be a bit of a block, you know, if you think you have yes. to have the perfect space, but. Um, it's just yeah, it's nice to have. It's really lovely to have. Yeah, oh, it's lovely. And um, can. You mentioned before about your short stories, um, and are you, and I, this is unconfirmed as far as I'm aware, but are you the um, same Philip Easter has been included in the new Ghost yes. Stories collection? Yes, I you am, are but by uh, the Fiction Desk. So, Do you mean by yes, the Fiction yeah. Desk? Yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've got it here in front of me, because um, I, I wanted to ask like about 
other genres that you might like to write in? Oh, but you mm. might already have done so here. Uh, yeah, well, I think that's one of the things I loved about writing short stories, actually, is you can write in like just any genre and they can often be a lot more kind of experimental and wacky than you probably could pull off in a whole novel, really. So, yeah, I think the story that's in, although it's a technically a ghost story in anthology, the story that, that's in there of mine is really a horror story. Um, and I, yeah, I would, I definitely... Yeah have a taste for psychological horror as well it's definitely a it's kind of a way that I'd I'd quite like to go oh, at some point maybe I, I would love to see you t your take on horror or, or any kind of horror you yeah. know what I mean? like, that would be yeah. exciting yeah. what do you think your publishers would say if you said you were about to <clears throat> um well I mean I think I'm hoping that there might come a point where it's okay to mix it up a little bit for yeah. me like I think now is not the time you know it's still I think it's still kind of establishing the brand, um, which is fine. Um, and also I think, you know, it might be a case of like watching the market a little bit. Like if the psychological thriller genre starts to bend more towards horror, then it'd be like, right, I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, you'd be on the front line right away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's something I'm always like, I've always got in mind like even this even this next book that I'm thinking of writing I think maybe we'll have kind of perhaps slightly more of that freaky element in it so yeah I just, like might play around with that a little bit yeah oh, very cool. good yeah. yeah seriously cool should we um should we have the one stars yeah <laughs> <laughs> I actually miss your old version of this game because I'm such a nerd when you used to read out, you know, when it was like, read the one star and guess what the book and the author is. Yeah. I'd be like, you know, when you like, you listen to University Challenge, like, yeah, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know this one, I've read this book. <laughs> did, you, did you ever get it? I never got it, I don't think. Sometimes, sometimes, like, yeah, like maybe like, well, I've listened to like all your podcasts, so like, maybe like three times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe next time you come on, I'll prepare a special one for you then. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that would be nice. Um, right, I'm going to read you, well, I'm going to give you two tonight, two items that someone, I won't say their name, uh, someone reviewed your book unfavourably. So I've looked at what else they've reviewed. Um, and they're a bit of a crafter, it would seem. Uh, so the first item is a mini bottle, and that's quite important, a mini bottle of glossy accents. Um, which oh, I... I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Like you open up and it's like, <laughs> like, hello, I'm Scottish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Well, mini, so it's high pitched. Um, I think <laughs> it's, I think it's like a sort of crafter glue from what I could gather. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, okay. So it's a mini bottle of crafter glue. So five stars or one star. Um, yeah. Um, one star. One star. I mean, I think it's hard. It's, it's easy to go wrong with glue, isn't it? You know, and I just think this is. She's. It's probably. Yeah, it's hard to get five stars for glue. So I just, just on that basis, I'm going to go one star. Okay, Rob. Um, I'm also going to go one star because when you said mini, I have it in my head that they receive just slightly more than mini amounts. <laughs> or and less, maybe it was too many. Yeah, they are furious about the. Yeah. It, an unspecified amount of glue that they received. Wrong. The, oh. the mini thing was a psych because they loved that it was small. Um, they oh. said, oh. <laughs> said, I don't use <laughs> lots of this. So this tiny bottle is perfect. I've bought the bigger size in the past and it's gone thick and hard. So I will keep buying this size. You're reading. <laughs> <laughs> So well, they, they won't like the story of the big book. No, they won't like. Oh, the, can you imagine how much glue that I've got to try and piece that back together? Like, basketball of well, <laughs> pages. It, it makes me happy that even though my book didn't make her happy, the mini bottle of <laughs> accents did. So yes, good, 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 good. That's so charitable of you. Because yeah, you're very really kind. Went into your first book. Versus the possible lack of hours that went into the accents mini bottle of glue. 
Um, the second one is a an iPhone tripod uh, to take, oh. uh, for, but with a remote. Click a remote. Mm, mm, one, one star, star or five star? Or five stars. <sighs> okay, I'm going to go five stars this time. I mean, she, yeah. Yeah, let's go five stars. Let's go five stars. <laughs> I don't know why. For the why. sake of competition, I'm going to go yeah. with one star. <laughs> okay. She ha- she absolutely despised it. it. It didn't work, and um, no amount of glue from a mini bottle would fix it. <laughs> <laughs> um, remote good, the rest bad. One star. Oh! <laughs> Well, that suggests to me that she's not a three-star kind of person either. No, no. yeah, you're right. No, no, you're nothing. Right. So, I'm gonna, ground here. so clearly, probably would have been a three-star from a book. If, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. She said that um, the, the tripod was too light, so the iPhone 8 um, bent it and it drooped. Um, but the remote control was <laughs> good. I see a theme here. I thought she didn't like big and hard. I just can't <laughs> think about droop. So come on. <laughs> She's impossible to please, clearly. <laughs> Sorry. Oops. Uh, <laughs> we, what didn't the game? Person. we never named them. No, we didn't, for good reason. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Everyone's entitled to anon- anonymity, I think, when it comes to... Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, shamed in this way. Some of these reviews are... Uh, 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 so dedicated. I, I love them. I think that they would like it if their names were attached. Yeah. If you spent yeah, 300 words taking down someone's book or something like that, um, yeah. then I think, like, probably you'd quite like your name to be attached to it. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised no one's brought a book out that just, you know, is a collection of like the funniest, well, maybe someone has, you know, funniest no, Amazon maybe. book reviews. Yeah. <laughs> That would, make, that would make this section a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> the ultimate reference tone. <laughs> yeah. uh, Philippa, do you have one of your own? Like, has anyone given you a one-star review that you really hold dear? I don't, I, I just don't read my reviews. Oh, really? I just don't, yeah. Like, yeah. even from, like, newspapers onwards, you just don't? Yeah, touch I mean, well, first of all, it's because Every time I listened to an established author talk, they said they didn't read reviews. And I thought, well, they've clearly figured out there's a reason not to, right? So why should I, you know, make them say mistakes, reinvent the wheel? I'm just not going to bother. And also, I, I sort of figured out pretty quickly that, well, for me at least, um, reading reviews just didn't give me anything positive. If I read a, if I read a negative, if I was going to read a negative review, that would just, you know, stick in my head in a negative way. And if I read a positive review, it would just make me freaked out that I then was under pressure to, you know, yeah. live up to it or whatever. Yeah. And I thought, I just I just asked myself the question, and this is as a good psychologist, I said, you know, what's the outcome that you want to achieve with that behaviour? Like, to feel better about my writing or whatever. Is that the outcome that you're achieving with that behaviour? No. Okay, we'll stop doing that behaviour then. So that was that was my basic no, everyone analysis. Listen, listen, everyone listen to that, what you just heard. <laughs> Oh, yeah, That's so amazing. I don't I don't have a, a crappy one. Well, I, well, I mean, probably the closest thing is like I sometimes run my new novel ideas past my husband and I'll say like, oh, I'm thinking about writing about this. And there'll be this little pause and then he'll be like, that sounds shit. <laughs> That's <laughs> the <end of> the <laughs> conversation. <laughs> so I'm like, scratch that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that I'm onto a good one if he kind of goes, hmm. That's green light. The ultimate barometer. Yeah. Yep. Direct from exactly. the miracle cure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a doctor. He should know. It really. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you reading at the minute, Philippa? Um, I'm actually at the moment. I'm reading. Oh, actually, can't even remember. I've just finished a book called Consent by Annabelle Lyon, and I've also just been reading this, which is True oh, Crime ooh. Story by Joseph Knox. And <laughs> about a year ago. I was saying to my husband, like, oh, I've got a new idea for a novel. What about if I write this um, book that I pitch as a, like a memoir and it's like I'm off going and solving this like true crime and it's all about what how it affects me and everything. Um, but I present it like a memoir and pretend it's like a true thing, but it's obviously really fiction. And he was like, mm, mm, mm. and then and then someone said, have you read Joseph Knox's true crime story? And I was like, 
someone's got in there ahead of me then. So, <laughs> Joseph, you've done a great job with my idea. I really think it's fantastic. <laughs> and, you know, just want to say, you know, congratulations on a fantastic book. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, it's really, I, I mean, I found that um, when I op opened that book and I read that first um, piece by him, it opens with a piece by yeah. him, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm. Saying how he's in, he, he's a part of the story and that he's no longer part of the publishers and things like that. Like yeah. his insertion of himself into this world that he's creating is whew, something else. Mm. Yeah, it's brave, isn't it? It's really brave, it is, but it's yeah. brilliant. I think he's, I think it's, I love it. I just, yeah. I think it's just a great, yeah, so clever, so yeah. clever. Yeah. What about you, Chris? What are you reading? Well, I'm about to finish. I About maybe a month ago, I, I asked Don Nolan, who seems to be the font of all knowledge, what good sort of private eye novels are. Because I just read Jonathan Ames's A Man Named Doll, which blew me away. And I just wanted to read like all that sort of olden timey. So he directed me the way of about 10 books and bankrupted me. But I'm just about to finish one called The Golden Case by Ross MacDonald, um, which I think was written in like the 50s or something, um, but it's so good. And um, I'm sort of trying my hand at a private eye novel at the minute. And it's it's really nice because there's no sort of rules like with the police, you don't have to go on, and you can do whatever he wants. So I'm just sort of trying to immerse myself because they're the first ones that I've really read. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to read as many of them as I can, and that's the latest one. But I'm literally about to finish it and move on to Richard Osman's The Man Who Died oh, Twice. Oh. Um, oh. So that's my next one. Um, I that's spoke... a cheeky proof, isn't it, there, Chris? It is, yeah. I, th I got one last time, and I think I'm just on their list. Um, you little rascal. Yeah, I spoke to him very, very, very briefly at Harrogate, um, and he seemed really nice. Um, no, so no. it's I was it's moved it up the pile now that I know that he's... So I always thought he's a nice guy. He comes across as one, doesn't he? But you think he can't be that talented and be nice as well. And then he was. So that's my next one. Cool. What about yourself? I um, I went to, uh, obviously, in Harrogate. Um, my wife doesn't read anything that I've done. And she, she's not a reader at all. But there's one person's um, book in the sort of the sphere that we know that she has read, which was The Last Thing to Burn by Will Dean. Um, so uh, um, she listened to it on audio, and then, but I didn't know that when I was lying next to her at night that she was listening to that. So I was like lying there like, night we are, you know, like uh, yeah, the, the pillow talk stuff. <laughs> and when she didn't answer, I thought, oh, bless her, she's so tired. No, nope, she's <laughs> listening to her. <laughs> so uh, when, I, when I saw him at Harrogate and we had a chat and stuff like that, and I had a, um, the one photograph I took from Harrogate was him and me from my wife. Um, oh. Yeah, um, but so uh, there's a theme here. Sorry, there's a reason I mentioned that. Um, I'm reading um, his uh, third Tuba Moody song thriller, um, Black River, um, which mm. is just great. It's just, I really flipping love books that are set in places that are so unique and interesting mm. and that the yeah. setting is just a character all by itself. Um, and he is just so great at that. So uh, yeah, I've got... I think I've got like, I'm on 70% of it at the minute. Um, I think tonight might be the night I get over the line with it. So <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, I think when we when we sign off tonight, I'll be doing an early night and getting on to that. So. Love it. Beautiful. That's <laughs> dandy. Um, really nice. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Philip. That was a real, I mean, that went quickly, didn't it? It, felt it did, yeah. <laughs> mm. Time yeah. flies when you're enjoying yourself, boy. Absolutely. It's been really <laughs> insightful, though. I think I've had such a, yeah, I've had such a good time. I've just had, yeah, it's been lovely. Really lovely chatting yeah. with you. Yeah, and I, I think... Oh, likewise. I think with, um, like Rob said at the start, like a lot of the listeners, I think, are maybe aspiring authors or people that are, are very early on. Um, and I think it's lovely hearing about all the successes, but also the, the stuff that you've told us tonight about the struggles and stuff like that is massive. Um, it's it's really helped me as well when I get to that stage where I think, oh, can't be bothered or whatever. Knowing that you know other people that are doing great things go through it as well has been really helpful. So mm. thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's been um, it's been so great. Um, and I, I'm with you, Chris. I feel like um, like rejuvenated in a way mm. tonight. You know, like I really do. Yeah, 
it's really really cool um and uh, philip for for me and i'm sure chris as well like um you'll want to watch what you're going to do next um where you're going and what you're doing yeah so exciting what you're doing so um thank you we, thank we you feel guys. like it's a coup to have you on with us tonight so thank you very oh, much oh thank you thank you guys and yeah. if you need us to edit out anything about book three if it doesn't happen just let us know <laughs> <laughs> if like if like i just like, like guys the whole thing's going to thin let's just cut that whole half out <laughs> oh god i really hope not no, it won't be. It won't We've be. got it won't faith. Be. It won't be. Yeah, won't be. yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's all good. Yeah. Well, thank you <laughs> Thanks, so, so much guys. for your time. And oh, thank no, you total pleasure. So great Thanks, to guys. Out. And we will see you again. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.